Hey guys, what's up? So I thought I will do this video for you all and to show a little bit of the software side of the DIY laser. And I'm using the uh, Raytools AX3000T controller, which is a, an integrated controller for tube cutting and also sheet cutting. But basically, it's, uh, it has two softwares, one for sheet cutting and the other one for tube cutting. So it's like two controllers uh, combined, but they are totally separated. So they have separated uh, software, uh, separated setting software, uh, separated nesting, separate everything. So I just want to show it to you uh, all the basics. So yeah, let's do it. Before we're going to go ahead and start with the video, guys, I would like to mention that this controller is sponsored by Skyfire Lasers. I will write down their web right here. You can also use my discount code from tomorrow, which is going to give an additional 5% discount. So yeah, if you're interested in learning about fiber lasers, if you're interested in buying fiber laser equipment, go ahead and check them out. They definitely have all the necessary information and all the necessary equipment um, to guide you to the process of building a fiber laser. And yeah, so go ahead and check them out and let's go ahead and start with the video. So here we go, guys. This is the icon that we get after downloading the software. This icon called um, Pi Panel HMI Switch. So we're going to click it. And now we have those two options right here. 2D cutting for sheet cutting and 3D cutting for square, tube, rectangular, round, all of those pipes slash uh, tubes. So first we're going to go ahead to 2D cutting. We're going to go ahead and let the software upload. So the software uploaded. And first, before we're going to go ahead and do anything, we need to home the machine. So how we do that? We here have those, this right here, CNC. So we need to be on this. And after that, we're going to click on return to origin. And as you can see here, all the axes are moving, including the F axis, which is for the focus. So basically what the machine is doing is it's looking for the limit switches. And after hit the limit switches, and the axis return to their home position, which is what I set up in the settings software. So this is uh, what actually is happening right now. We're going to go ahead and let the X axis return. <coughs> so the X axis, axis return to its uh, home position, and now we can actually operate the machine. So we, we're going to go ahead and upload some file. Uh, let's see what's, what is that. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to delete one of those. Okay, so this is my file. This is just a DXF file. And as you can see, we have those numbers. So the software already uh, recognized the outer contour and the inner shapes uh, and holes of the, sh of the drawing. So now we need to add some additional uh, settings. So we're going to go ahead and click Favorites. And the first setting we need to add is compensate so we're going to mark all of those and click on compensate compensate is settings for and basically the laser beam eat up the material and this is how the material is actually is being cut it's the curve width so i'm using i think don't cut me out on the word uh, 1.3 uh, nozzle double nozzle for oxygen and this is the curve width the length the width of the material that the laser beam actually eats up, eat up. Um, so we're going to click on OK. And, and now we have this additional white line. We have the original green line and the white line. The white line is what is going to, the laser head is going to actually uh, position itself in a cut. We have this on the outer contour and also on the inner contour. Now we're going to go ahead and add lead line. I'm going to click on that. I like to use line plus arc, and I don't use the lead out because I don't think it's a, I don't find it really necessary. All my cuts are uh, coming out great, so this is just my choice. And here we have works on the inner contour. So we're going to click it, and now you can see there is this lead line. There is the arc and the line. 
And now we're going to do the same process, but for the outer contour. So just need to mark that. And now we have that. So basically this is it. But there is additional uh, setting that I like to add on really small parts for them not to fall out to the tray below the laser. So I'm going to click on micro joint. So I have this 1.5 millimeter that I'm going to actually leave out and therefore the part won't actually fall out. Now I like to put it on the lead line itself. As you can see, we have, we have this right here, this blank spot. So this is part is not going to be actually cut and therefore the, the part won't fall out to the tray below and I will just need to break it out and it will come out really easily. Now we need to decide uh, which material we're going to cut. I have those here, uh, those uh, material settings that I usually use. Um, three millimeter mild steel, galvanized, four millimeter black, uh, mild steel, I'm sorry, galvanized, five millimeter uh, mild steel, eight millimeter mild steel, and 10 millimeter mild steel. Those are the settings uh, that I set. And we have here all the speed, uh, the nozzle height, type of uh, gas assist, gas pressure, laser power, duty cycle, pulse, uh, frequency, laser on delay, focus point. This is the cutting uh, parameters and we have an additional piercing parameters. Um, pierce time, pierce height, uh, type of uh, gas assist, gas pressure, laser, um, power duty cycle, uh, pulse frequency, and uh, focus points, and so forth. And those are the settings. Now we're going to, I want, if I want to cut basically uh, multiple parts of this. So we have nesting functions on the settings, on the software, I'm sorry. We have here nest, we're going to click it. I'm going to, I'm going to mark it and I'm going to go to array. Now this settings is for uh, the same part with the same orientation, we have here row and we have column. So let's say I want this part with three rows and three columns. This is the distance between the columns, three millimeter. This is the distance between the rows. I can set it up that the row, the, the rows will go up and not and not down, and to the right and not to the left. So we're going to click OK. And now this is what we have, three rows, three columns. Now I'm going to show you how to nest parts. If you have multiple uh, drawings that you would like to put on a sheet, a full sheet or uh, part of sheet, I don't know. And so now we have this part. So we're going to click on it. I already, did, uh, I already, I already uh, upload uh, those drawings. You can just add parts and click on your DXF files. So let's say I want 20 of those and, and I don't know, 10 of those. And now we're going to click on this part. And now here we have this uh, sheet um, parameter. So now we here we have this, the sheet size. We can change the size, and here above we have the distance between the parts, how it's going to um, put them together. So I wrote down here five millimeter, which is good for me. I'm going to click uh, OK. It's, the, it's doing the nesting, and this is what we got. We have the white rectangular which is the sheet size. And here it's put, it put on all the parts that I wanted with five millimeter between of them. Now I'm going to show to you the tube cutting software. I'm going to click it again and 3D cutting. We're going to let it a second to upload. The software uploaded. We have alarm here that the axis have not returned to their origin. So we're going to do the same process. 
stout origin and we're going to give it a second for all the axes to return to their origin all the axes have returned to their origin to the home and place that I set up on the setting software so we need to close it up now if we want to upload a file here it's not done by this uh, software we have an additional nesting software which is a must so we're going to click it the software called TubeKit this is a software and this software uh, can accept step files so we're going to go ahead and upload a step file that I made using Fusion 360 okay so what I have here is a square tube and here above you can see that the software already recognized the tube um, parameters so we have rectangular tube with 60 height 60 cone radius uh, 5 millimeter thickness 2.9 and the length is uh, 3759 millimeters now we need to add uh, cutting parameters the same as the sheet uh, software so we're going to go ahead and mark it out we're going to click on compensate we'll click it out and now you can see that the green line has, has gone further away from the actual lead line now we'll go, let's go ahead and add lead lines again the same process confirm you can see here that I have all those lead lines now we need to set it up on tube so we're going to go ahead and click on nest here you can see it, it uh, says three uh, six thousand millimeter tube so this is just the default uh, value if you have uh, shorter tubes you need to write it down here here we have five millimeter this is the distance if we're going to nest couple parts on a tube this is the distance five millimeter between the parts and 300 uh, millimeters is the distance between the rear chuck and the front chuck when it can actually when it actually stops so this is the, uh, the safe distance that I cannot cut let's say if I want to cut uh, a full tube which is uh, 600 6,000 millimeters like uh, six meter long I cannot actually cut all the the six uh, the six uh, meter long okay there is a uh, 30 centimeters that is actually left out so this is right uh, what we got here it's actually less but this is a safe number so we're going to confirm and as you can see it set it out on a six meter long tube and now we're going to go ahead and export the file let's say call it 6060 three uh, seven uh, I don't know okay now we're going to come back to the cutting software we're going to upload the file and here we have the file now we have the uh, cutting parameters those are just uh, some of the, my saved parameters that I could that I cut regularly so this is the settings the cutting settings that I set up for this uh, specific tube and as you can see here we have an additional settings because it's a rectangular tube that we can set up height compensation I think it's basically the most important one so when the tube actually rotates and the laser head is actually above the corner the capacitance reading actually becomes uh, not as stable let's say becomes different with different value so that's why we have this parameter height uh, compensation and of course all the other uh, settings are uh, really useful as well the corner speed if you want to do it uh, slower on the corner uh, power I really go down on the power and, uh, and in the duty cycle so those are really really helpful I have all the piercing parameters as well now a really useful functions that this software has it has all of those 
and centering options. So I, what, what I would like, what I like to use and what I use regularly is the, this function uh, five point center. So what it does is actually levels the, the tube and actually centers, centers it and on, on each side. So if you want to use it, you need to uh, click start. I don't have a tube right now, but you can click uh, start and then it's, uh, it's actually doing the process of centering it. I'm going to show it to you next. I've loaded on the machine this square 60 by 60 uh, tube. Now let's go through the centering process. So we're going to click on on start. As you can see, it was super fast. <laughs> so I'm going to show it to you again. But here you can see the offsets. So after that, you're going to apply and OK. Now we're going to do it again. And I'm going to show it to you from a different angle. So as you just saw, guys, the first thing that it's actually doing is it's leveling, it's leveling uh, the plane of the tube with the laser head, with basically the x-axis. And after that, it's centering the tube with uh, taking the coordinates of each plane when it turns, and then it's centering the tube. So yeah, it's pretty useful and it's pretty cool. And I'm doing it in every after I uh, after I load every tube on the machine, I am doing the centering uh, function. This is it for this video, guys. I hope it was useful for some of you all. I uh, hope you learned something. I hope it was uh, interesting for you. And if you have any other stuff that you would like me to explain about the machine, about the process, about, I don't know, uh, software, uh, making files for it, comment down below. Uh, I read all the comments. I comment on the comments. So, yeah, guys, see you all on the next one.